Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to this talk. Today, I'll be talking about our work on approximation algorithms for stochastic minimum norm combinatorial optimization. This is joint work with my advisor Chaitanya Swami. Our work is motivated by growing interest in optimization under uncertainty. The category of problems that we consider is called one stage stochastic optimization. Here, costs are described by random variables and we need to take decisions while only knowing the distributions of these costs. Each feasible solution induces a random multidimensional cost vector. For example, in key clustering, the cost vector consists of the assignment cost of the point. The solution quality is measured by aggregating entries of this cost vector. For instance, in the well-studied k-median clustering, one looks at the sum of entries in the assignment cost vector. And in k-center, one looks at the maximum entry in the assignment cost vector. The goal in such settings is to find a solution which has good quality and expectation. The most commonly studied objectives are L1 and L-infinity norms. Minimizing the L1 norm models utilitarian view whereas minimizing the L-infinity norm models egalitarian view. Min-max and min-sum objectives skew solutions in different directions, so LP norms can be helpful in modeling a mix of these extremes. And since objective functions are just a means to an end, we want to define algorithms that can work for a wide class of objective functions. Recently, Chakrabarti and Swami considered the class of monotone symmetric norms and gave order one approximation algorithms for load balancing and clustering problems arising from such objectives. Formally, a norm F is monotone if increasing a coordinate does not lead to a decrease in the norm. And a norm is symmetric if it is invariant under permutation of coordinates. In this talk, I'll often use the notation x with a superscript of downwards arrow. This is a shorthand for the vector x with its coordinates sorted in non-increasing order. Also, since the costs arising in our setting are non-negative, we'll restrict ourselves to the non-negative orthodont. Let me make a few arguments in favor of working with monotone symmetric norms. First of all, all LP norms are monotone symmetric. There's another class of special norms called top L norms, which are building blocks of all monotone symmetric norms. The top L norm of a vector is the sum of its L largest entries. Top L norms give another natural way of interpolating between the min max and min sum objectives. So monotone symmetric norms can capture many interesting objectives under one umbrella. Here's another reason why working with monotone symmetric norms is lucrative. A maximum over monotone symmetric norms is yet another monotone symmetric norm. So an optimization problem with multiple norm budget constraints can be cast as a minimization problem with a single norm objective. We simply consider the monotone symmetric norm, which is a maximum over each of the norms FL scaled down by their corresponding budgets BL. This is helpful to obtain a fine-grained control on the cost vector. For instance, we can prescribe for that each L, the top L norm of the cost vector should fit within a budget PL. More concretely, this modeling power is used in stochastic load balancing with Poisson job. The following two concrete problems are central to our investigation. First, we consider a problem arising in stochastic load balancing. We have a set of n stochastic jobs that are to be assigned to exactly one of m unrelated machines. The processing time of job j on machine i is a random variable which we denote by xij. We assume that jobs are independent, so xij and x prime, xi prime j prime are independent whenever j is not equal to j prime. However, for any fixed job j, the random variables xij and xi prime j 
can have arbitrary correlations. We assume that for each job J, we have access to complete distributional information of the joint distribution of variables corresponding to this job. We are given a monotone symmetric norm F that dictates the quality of an assignment. In the figure below, we show an assignment of eight jobs to four machines. This assignment induces a load vector of the machines. For example, since jobs two and three are assigned to machine one, the load on machine one is the composite random variable x12 plus x13. Observe that the coordinates of the load vector are independent random variables since job variables are independent. Our goal in this problem is to find an assignment that minimizes the expected f norm of the induced load, load vector. It is worth repeating that the assignment is oblivious to the actual realizations of the job sizes. The second problem that we consider arises from spanning trees. In this setting, we have an undirected graph on n vertices. Edges have stochastic weights, which are denoted by xc. We assume that the edge weight variables are independent and that we have complete distributional information of each edge variable. In the figure below, we have a graph on six vertices and I've highlighted a spanning tree in red. This tree induces a random cost vector, which is obtained by considering the edge variables that participate in the tree. Our goal here is to find the spanning tree that minimizes the expected F norm the induced cost vector. More generally, we motivate the abstract problem of stochastic minimum norm optimization, where we have an underlying combinatorial optimization problem. For each feasible solution, we assume that the coordinates of the induced cost vector are independent. Our goal is to find a feasible solution that minimizes the expected F norm of the induced cost vector. Our contribution in this work is to develop tools and techniques to reason about the expected F norm of a random vector that has certain independence properties among its coordinates. For convenience, we shall refer to such a random vector as a product distribution. It is not hard to see that reducing this problem to deterministic F norm optimization by working with expected cost can lead to poor solutions. The following result due to Chakrabarti and Swami will be useful to us. They show that for any monotone symmetric norm F, there is a collection script C of non-increasing vectors such that for any vector X, the F norm of X is simply the supremum or the dot product of a vector in script C with the sorted X vector. From the above, it follows that if the top L norm of a vector X is at most alpha times the top L norm of a vector Y for all Ls, then the F norm of X is bounded by alpha times the F norm of Y. In fact, with an additional factor to loss, you only need to work with L's that are powers of two. The takeaway is that at an order one loss in approximation, deterministic F norm optimization reduces to simultaneous top L optimization over L's that are powers of two. So how does this help us with the much harder stochastic setting? As a first step, we can express the expected F norm of a product distribution capital Y as the expectation of a supremum over some dot product. By convexity, exchanging the expectation and the supremum operators gives a lower bound. This lower bound is simply the F norm of the expected sorted Y vector. In general, this lower bound is weak. Interestingly, by crucially exploiting the independence between the coordinates of Y, we prove an approximate converse. In the sequel, 
Let F denote an arbitrary monotone symmetric norm and capital Y and capital W denote product distribution. The main mathematical theorem in our work, which forms the backbone of our framework is shown below. It says that the expected F norm of a random vector Y is within a constant factor of the F norm of the expected sorted Y vector. An immediate consequence of this result is something that we call approximate stochastic majorization. If the expected topple norm of Y is bounded by alpha times the expected topple norm of W for all L, then we can infer that the expected F norm of Y is bounded by order alpha times the expected F norm of W. Putting it another way, at an order one loss in approximation, we have a reduction from stochastic F norm optimization to simultaneous stochastic top L optimization over L's that are powers of two. Using the above tools, we obtain approximation factors of order one for stochastic F norm spanning tree, order one for stochastic F norm load balancing with Bernoulli jobs, and order log M over log log M for general norms and general job size distributions. Over the next few slides, I'll sketch a proof of our main theorem. For a fixed vector little y, let us draw a bar diagram, which we call as the histogram of y. In this diagram, we sort the coordinates of y in decreasing order and vertically stack them one on top of the other with the largest, largest coordinates being at the bottom. We have already seen that getting a handle on all top L norms gives us a handle on the f norm. We control the top L norm of Y by using a horizontal slider that tracks the number of coordinates in Y that are strictly larger than a threshold theta. It is easy to verify that the L at largest coordinate of Y is the smallest threshold theta at which the tracker dips below L. This naturally motivates a notion of the L at largest coordinate of a random vector Y. We define the tau L statistic of Y to be the smallest threshold theta at which the expected number of coordinates in Y that are larger than theta dips below L. Now let's generalize the notion of a histogram to a random vector. The curve shown in blue tracks the expected number of coordinates in Y that are larger than theta. Recall that tau L is the smallest theta where this blue curve dips below L. We define gamma L of Y to be the area of the shaded region shown in the figure. Here's a fascinating result that shows that the blue curve encodes a lot of information about the expected sorted Y vector. The gamma L function, the constant factor proxy for the expected top L norm of Y for all L. In fact, we can say something even stronger. For any monotone symmetric norm F, the F norm of the expected sorted vector is within a constant factor from the F norm of the blue curve. Here, we use the term blue curve to denote the vector that has gamma one in the first entry, which is the area of the dotted region in the figure above. And the remaining coordinates are tau two, tau three, and so on up to tau m. We are now ready to finish the proof of our main theorem. On the previous slide, we related the expression on the right to the F norm of the blue curve it remains to relate the expected norm of Y to the norm of the blue curve. First of all, observe that the number of large coordinates in Y with respect to threshold tau L is a sum of independent Boolean random variables. And the expectation of this number is at most L. 
By Chernoff bounds, the number of large coordinates with respect to threshold tau L strongly concentrates around L. Let's start by sampling a vector little y from the product distribution of y, of capital Y, and then overlay its histogram on our figure. If the histogram of y were to lie below the blue curve, then we could have bounded the f norm of little y by the f norm of the blue curve. This is not true in general because the blue curve is the average of the histograms of little y. So there will be places where the histogram crosses the blue curve. Here's how we get around this issue. Consider a scaling of the blue curve, which is shown in green. The crux of our proof lies in inferring that the probability of the histogram of little y lying below the green curve rapidly approaches one as alpha gets larger. A straightforward calculation shows that the expected norm is within a constant factor of the F norm of the blue curve. This finishes the proof. Let's switch gears and see how our framework can be used to design approximation algorithms for stochastic minimum norm versions of spanning tree and load balancing problems. We start with spanning trees since the ideas are easier to follow. Let W denote the cost, cost vector of an optimal spanning tree. And suppose that we have approximately guessed the tau L statistic of W for each power of two L. We include valid inequalities to the spanning tree LP to model tau L constraints. This can be achieved by writing the knapsack inequality for each such L. By iterative rounding, we can obtain a spanning tree whose tau L statistics can be bounded in terms of tau L statistics of the optimal solution. This leads to an order one approximation for stochastic F norm spanning tree with arbitrary edge weight distributions. The above theorem also generalizes to the matroid setting. Next, we consider stochastic load balancing. We start with the special case when the norm is a top L norm. Since the load on a machine is the sum of job random variables that are assigned to it, we no longer have easy access to the expected number of coordinates in Y that are larger than a threshold theta. To get around this hurdle, we give another constant factor proxy for the expected top L norm of Y. This is similar to the gamma L proxy that we saw earlier. Working with this proxy requires a sophisticated notion called the effective size. And this is due to Hoey and Kleinberg et al. We do not delve into the details of this. In this setting, we get an order one approximation with arbitrary job size distributions. The above theorem can be seen as a generalization of Gupta et al's result who gave an order one approximation for minimizing the expected mix span, which corresponds to the L equal to one case. Our algorithm based on LP rounding is similar to this, but our approach is more direct and simpler. On a related note, Molinaro gave an order one approximation for stochastic load balancing with LP norms. Our result can be seen as a different flavor of interpolation between the L infinity and L1 norms. Back with our main result, we aim to simultaneously approximate top L norms for all Ls that are powers of two. We give a clever iterative rounding algorithm for the setting with Bernoulli jobs. In this setting, every Xij takes at most two sizes and one of them is zero. This leads to an order one approximation for stochastic F norm load balancing with Bernoulli jobs. On the other hand, when job sizes are arbitrary, we give a much simpler iterative rounding algorithm that leads to an order log M over log log M approximation. As is suggested by the approximation factor, the analysis uses Chernoff bounds. 
Let me summarize key contributions of our work. The backbone of our work is a surprising mathematical theorem that shows that the expected norm of a random vector is within a constant factor from the norm of the expected sorted vector. This gives us a framework for stochastic f norm law optimization based on st simultaneous stochastic top L optimization for Ls that are powers of two. In terms of tools, we give two intuitive linearizable constant factor proxies for the expected top L norm of a random vector. Using this framework, we develop order one approximation algorithms for various stochastic min norm optimization problems. I'll conclude my talk with the following open problems. The most pressing question is whether there exists an order one approximation for stochastic load balancing for arbitrary monotone symmetric norms and arbitrary job size distributions. This is open even in the identical machine setting. Next, can we obtain tighter bounds on the gap between the expected norm of a random vector and the norm of its expected sorted vector? Our current best bound is 12, but we believe that the true gap is much smaller. Thank you for your interest in this talk.